Right, I want you to remember back to when we were doing, it wasn't that long ago, approximating roots, and I said, can you approximate from the root three? And the way we had to do that was to form a polynomial that would do the job, right? What polynomial do you form to find the square roots of three plus four, right? What's the polynomial? Z squared, yeah, good. I want some number, some copy number Z, such that when I square it, I end up with this. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Um, and once I solve that, I'll be fine. So you want to remember back, okay, every complex number is in the form x plus i, y. It's got its real part, it's got its imaginary part. And so when you square that out, thanks to the beauty of uh, i, you're not going to get x squared plus y squared, you're going to get x squared minus y squared, because it's an i squared y squared. So there's my real component. And then I'm going to have my imaginary component, which is... 2xy i, right? Or 2i, it doesn't work. So you're going to just state that x and y are the same. Yeah, I should. I should. Let me finish writing. And because as you'll notice, that becomes crucial later on. Because otherwise, what would happen if x and y weren't real? If x and y weren't real, yeah, you'd, get, you'd get more roots and also just being more fundamental. There's no guarantee Z will be, like, what would Z be? It wouldn't necessarily have a real and imaginary component, which is what we want it to be by definition. All right, so you skip a little bit down, right? You're going to have to form your two equations, right? Equation. What are you going to get for x squared minus y squared? That's 3. And then you've got your 2xyi, sorry, your 2xy, which is equal to 4. Okay. So out of this, you can change, rearrange to make it whichever one you want. These are symmetric equations, so if you make y the subject or x the subject, you're still going to get the same answer. I think I went about it that way, which gave me this. Yeah? Okay. Now, what do you do with that? What happens there? What are we going to do with this? I'm going to multiply through by x squared. That gave me a quartic. Okay. Once you get through to your quartic, you go ahead and solve. What's the factorization you get? x squared minus 4 x Plus one. Uh, there you go. And you can see here, this is why it was so important that we have identified them as real, because I'm not going to get any solutions out of that, right? So I would say, since x is real, right, x must be plus or minus 2 only, okay? I think that's important that we ignore reasons, sorry, we ignore solutions for a reason, okay? Um, since I've got x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, there are y values that go, come along with that, which will give us our actual points. When x equals 2, what's y equal to? 1. one. Um, or x equals negative 2. It's just that. Okay, just that. Okay, how does your plot look? How does your argument diagram look? Like? Did you remember to plot your original complex number 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. Got it there? Okay, now I really hope you've drawn a decent diagram on here because you will, um, you'll be able to follow along and, and see all the, remember the view of this uh, again. The biggest number I'm going to have is 3 plus 4, right? So I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4. So up here, let's pop it in place. There is 3 plus 4, right? Okay? Where are our two square roots in relation to that? So I can do the first quadrant one fairly easily. 2 plus i. That's my first value for z, so I'm going to call it z1. And of course, z2, where's that? It's just on the opposite side of the origin, right? So if I put my, uh, my points down. Okay, now I'm going to use this as our opportunity to remember when you treat complex numbers not just as points, but as vectors. Okay, you get to take advantage of all this beautiful geometry that's just inbuilt into complex numbers. Okay, in particular, if you recall, compare your two roots to the original number, right? So you've got this guy up here. Now, if you've drawn yours well and your scale is even half decent, you should be able to easily see that the argument of Z1 is clearly half the argument of the square root. Do you see it? 
Like that has to be theta. Even if your diagram is not that, not that good, you should be able to see because you know, counting up to three and four, not that complicated, right? And you can even see on mine, I, I made no measurements at all, it was a complete estimate, and it's already almost perfectly hard. Okay. Those are the two arguments there. So the argument on my scheme to the original number is two theta. What's the argument to the other square root? What is that argument? Three theta plus tiny. What, negative three theta? Now, you can think about this in a variety of ways. Um, if I wanted the principal argument, I would go, I would go this way, right? Um, I would say, okay, well, hold on a second. This is going to be, I'm going to go negative pi to get to there, but then I'm going to add theta to come back, right? I could do that. For the reasons that we come here in a second, just to remind you, I'm actually going to go the other way and not have the principal argument. So what is the size, what's the magnitude of that argument? Three this is this is easier to see. I go pi and then I go an extra theta. Do you agree with that? So that's pi plus theta. Okay. Now here's the beautiful thing. Uh, why is it important that the uh, the arguments there for the first root are half here? Well, because if we square this, I should get up to here, right? And when you multiply a complex number, what do you do to the arguments? You add arguments, right? Remember this? You add r. So you get theta. You add it again, and up you are to two theta. That makes sense. What about this other one? What happens to here? Z2 is all the way over here. So you've got pi plus theta, where you multiply by this again, you add the same argument. What happens when you double this? It's 2 pi plus 2 theta. But of course, 2 pi is just a full revolution, so you don't need to worry about it. And then you've got the 2 theta. Beautiful, right? In fact, I'm even going to put that in here. Uh, I'm going to go around like this. That's 2 pi plus 2 theta, which is actually just 2 theta, right? My last little bit, just to do a bit of Pythagoras quickly, right? That was the arguments. What's the modulus to the square roots? The modulus is the same. It's root 5, isn't it? Because this is 1, 2, so it's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, so that's root 5. And then when you have a look at the original complex number, this is 3, 4, this is the quintessential Pythagorean triad, that's 5. Because of course, when you multiply complex numbers, you add args and you multiply mods. Yes? Is it coming back to you now? Okay, good.